ladies and gentlemen, Adam Brock of the Kudzu Killers. Hey guys, how's it going, dude? It's excellent, actually. I mean, it's uh, I'm, it, it's a good day. I'm glad to be here. Glad we made it here. Yeah, man, uh, made so, it yeah, happen. It's it's all good. It's all good. Dude, y'all have been doing quite a bit. I've seen the Diamond Rio uh, yes, uh, concert yeah. that y'all have going on. You opened up for them. That's cool, man. Congratulations. I'm, I'm a little nervous. Thank you. I, I, I'm a little nervous. We've, uh, we have we played. That's at the Daniel Boone Festival. It'll be uh, uh, October the 8th. It was when we'll be there. That's in Barville. But we played there before, and uh, they hollered at us this year again. And it's like, hey, come do what you do. And we're like, all right. So, yeah, we're, we're excited for that. We really are. That's cool, man. And, and Diamond Rio, you're not – legendary group yeah yeah hence why i'm nervous <laughs> it's, you know that's uh you know it's that, that that's a big deal so we know they're not there for us but uh i mean we're just glad they got the built-in crowd so that's good it's good to see good things happen to good people though man like i've uh i've, I've met tyler and the rest of the guys mm-hmm. on some occasion who all is in kudzu killers We've changed the lineup a lot, but uh, right now, uh, let's see if I can forget anybody's name. Uh, our drummer right now is a guy named Tit McNeil. Uh, he's from Harlan. Uh, everybody in the band's from Harlan. Uh, we got Tyler Smith, of course. Uh, he's from Harlan. Got my father, which is an uh, interesting dynamic because wow. I'm supposed to be the leader of the band, but yet having Ooh. your father in the band, yeah. am I really the leader? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. He kind of tells me what to do all the time. So uh, right now we got Ross Bailey on uh, on bass. Um, we got Lauren Tolliver on guitar. Uh, and then there's me, you know, trying to keep up with the guys. So I'm the guy in the middle. So Yeah, y'all are making great music, man. And I got to say, I love the video for Hey Somebody, yeah. too. Yeah. It, it's, that was awesome, man. That was, I mean, where, where we're from and, and, and where we're right now is not too much different. But Harlan's always been, you know, kind of been behind the times of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's been a couple of movies shot there recently. Uh, what but, movies? Well, I think there's one called Above Suspicion. It's a good name. Oh, yeah. I think that was one. There was one that was actually supposed to be a storyline that was in Pikeville. I can't remember what it was. Oh, Something the, about a, uh, is the FBI agent? Yeah, FBI agent. I can't the remember the name of the movie. The woman. Yes, yeah. that one. Uh, so but they, they came to Harlan to film it because Harlan looks more dated than Pikeville does. So okay. they were that looking for sense. dilapidated buildings, and hey, Harlan's <laughs> got plenty of those. So that's, that's uh, they're like, hey, let's do it. So, uh, but yeah, uh, the, the, the video was shot 100% Harlan. 100% by uh, Harlan people. Cool. Um, a guy named Dakota Sailor with uh, Lunch Break Productions. He's actually, I know I'm going off on a, on a thing here, but he's I actually you, out in uh, Colorado right now. I think he did last night. He was recording, a uh, uh, video recording, uh, Lance Rogers playing at Red Rocks because I think he was part of the uh, uh, Tyler Childers just played out there last night. Yeah, yeah. So he's out there doing some video work for that. Uh, so he's the guy that um, did the video for us in Harlan. And we wanted to uh, just incorporate, if, if we could, keep it 100% Harlan, you know. So yeah. uh, all the businesses you see, the people in it, because uh, we wanted to kind of display, like, the people who made it through, you know, this whole COVID stuff. You know, mm-hmm. the businesses stayed open, the restaurants and things, and want to make everything kind of local. Um so we're proud of where we're from, and we wanted to display that. That's good, man, because yeah. it, it, it's unfortunate whenever you see an artist abandon their hometown or their the yeah. area that they're from. Like, you go on Chris Stapleton's Wikipedia page, and mm-hmm. it says he's from Lexington, and you're like, oh, no, he, no, 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 he's not. No, no he's not. <laughs> no, no, he's not. And, 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 and Incorrect. Chris, he stays to his roots. I think that's most maybe his management side mm-hmm. or something like that. They're like, oh, that'll look better or whatever. I, I just love when artists are able to say, no, we're going to do it how we want Absolutely. to do it, and we're going to show love to our hometown because I mean, like that's where you started. You know, it's it's a beautiful thing that y'all do mm-hmm. that. Yeah, it's we, we're like I said, we're glad and, and proud of where we come from. Uh, you know, we got our start there as far as uh, you know, because Harlan doesn't have a whole lot of places to play as far as venues. You know, we have yeah. one, and then one festival. You know, yeah. so that was our that was our platforms that we had to work with. So uh, we played at this place. We started out um, at a place called the Portal Restaurant in Harlan. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a pizzeria, Italian kind of place, you know. Great name. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was uh, so the downstairs is where you eat, but upstairs, you know, they try their hand at having our first bar, you know. 
very yeah. small bar, not much bigger than this little area right here. But they've survived it, and we started saying, hey, let's just try to have some some shows up there. And uh, we did, and I was thinking, well, you know, maybe four or five of my friends will show up. Maybe my mother will show up. Yeah. And, no, like, there was about 70 to 80 people that nice, showed up. Nice, man. For, you know, and we didn't know. <clears throat> we still don't know, but we definitely didn't know what we were doing then. Yeah. You know, we'd go up there and just throw a bunch of sound equipment together and hope it didn't, you know, catch on fire. So it's uh but yeah, so we started having those and and it uh it just kinda blossomed into what it is now and, and there was a time period for probably three years ago that we were playing you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, yeah. rest on Sunday, you know, and started all back over again. We're playing somewhere every single day, you know, and uh you know, we we learned how to do this. So, I mean it, it it's been such a fun fun experience you yeah. know and and i get to do it with guys that i really you know like and my dad my dad's 70 so my dad is in a you know a kick-ass rock and roll band and yeah he gets to, we get to travel to all these places so it's really neat what's that like working with your dad though i love my father with everything in me <laughs> but i don't know if i could do this show if he was sitting right here beside me that would it'd be a little bit difficult yeah uh, it, dad's cool, man. Like he's, he's, uh, you know, I, dad exposed me to music in, in my youth. Like he's, I mean, my, my dad was a, was a rocker from old and my mom's more of a Motown chick. Yeah. So I got all kinds of like sounds in my ears, but I mean, you know, every time dad and I would go somewhere, Red will be on song to play. He turned down real quick. Name that band. Yeah. You know, Bobby turn overdrive, something like that, you know, some or steely Dan, something like that, mm -hmm. you know, and it's. It just it developed that way, and we've just always always had that love and appreciation for for good music. Um, so, it, it, as far as the dynamics, I mean, we we butted heads a couple times, you know, like yeah. you know, it, but it for I mean, for the most part, it's been uh, one of the best things. Uh, you know, as, as I've gotten, I've gotten older. He's gotten older. You know, we I've kind of grown up in the middle of the whole thing, and he's always he's always next to me. You know, yeah. and. Uh, uh, that's you know it's something that not, not a whole lot of people can say that they've done. Yeah. So it, it's it, it's a unique experience. It, it's cool when you can make those type of rela relationships work. Has he always been in the band, or is that like something that's kind of been more recent? Oh no, Dad. Dad somebody asked us this the other day. Uh, actually, our band, Cuts of Killers, uh, started off as a bluegrass band. Yeah. That, uh, that's a great name for a bluegrass. Yeah, group, well, well, a great name for any band. But well, bluegrass. That, that's kind of cool. The 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 actual name. That, that's another story. But it's, it was. Uh, but we didn't want anything with like river or creek in it. So yeah, that's that's that's, that's what that's what we we came up with. But uh, but yeah, Dad and I started off uh, playing around campfires with our buddy uh, 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 Chip, yeah. and uh, he. Um, you know, Chip was kind of the the guy that was doing all the singing and all that stuff, and I was just kind of learning how to do these things, you know. Yeah. So you know, somebody heard us around a campfire, and uh, then they uh, said, "Hey, you know, don't you guys come to my house? We'll feed you some chicken, and you can play for five hours." <laughs> okay, you know that sounds cool. Then somebody else heard us, and somebody else, and then finally, we kind of got to where we were getting kind of on a regular thing, you know. So, but then we actually went to a bluegrass festival and tried to play bluegrass, and we quickly realized that. We're not good. We're not <laughs> yeah. good enough to play bluegrass music because bluegrass music, if nobody plays it, is some of the hardest music to play. Yeah. Because dude. if you screw up, everybody knows it. You know, I, like I, whenever I was younger, I just kind of looked away from bluegrass. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't know. I, I was very uh, naive to the art form. Mm -hmm. I just thought that it was old timers' music mm -hmm. that I didn't want to listen to. But now that I'm older, I, I, I love bluegrass and I have such a deep appreciation for it because now I know how hard it is to play. I'm, I'm not a musician, but I've talked with enough musicians and I know enough about it to realize that, hey, you have to be good yeah. to play bluegrass music. You can't just mess around. Oh, and yeah. It ain't just plucking a few strings. Right. Like, what? Are the, what's, I guess they're picks. What do you call the things that they wrap around the fingers? Oh, that's the, like the like the little banjo picks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, they'll have one on every finger. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, Jesus, I, I thought you just had one pick. No. So I have nothing but respect <laughs> for bluegrass players. That's that, that's me, and I, 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 it's a funny story because when I was uh, young, young, I mean, I was you know real deep into the 
you know, Nirvana was 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 big and all that stuff. And I was loving the grunge stuff, right? So, yeah. right about that that time period, uh, my parents uh, said, "Hey, let's go to Abingdon, Virginia, and watch a concert." I'm like, "Okay, who's playing?" They go, "Ricky Skaggs." I go, "I'm gonna hate it. I already know I am." Yeah. But I went, got out of the house, went, sat front row. Nice. That show, it, it honestly <laughs> changed a part of me to like appreciate, you know, the music of my of my people, of my of my culture. Mm-hmm. You know, bluegrass is is just, you know, this is where it is. Yeah. You know, so uh I, I he played the song called Coal Mine of Man and it just uh mm-hmm. I mean it, it just it's it resonated something to me that I'll never forget. Ricky, that's one of the best to ever do it. Whenever it comes oh, to bluegrass, understatement for, yeah. for for anybody that's not familiar with bluegrass, Ricky, that's that's about as good as it gets. Him, Ralph Stanley, and also I'm a fan of what uh Billy Strings is doing too. Yeah, dude, I, yeah, he's turning on a lot of the younger people to the bluegrass art form. I don't even know if you can call his music bluegrass. It. Acid bluegrass? I don't know. Like it's it's it's, it's like a weird mix of Jerry Garcia I was and, say, and, and yes. Ricky Skaggs. Yes. You know, I yeah. mean, it's, which is a good thing. <clears throat> yeah, That's man, a good it, thing. It's, it's awesome. He's got his own thing going, and, and I'm so happy that like he's keeping the art form of bluegrass going, but in a more modern way. He right. fi- he figured out this weird thing that he has going on, and it works. Yeah, I, I think it's it, he he uh, he's a young guy. Covered in tattoos, he makes it cool. He makes bluegrass cool yeah. because, like you said, it, it was kind of got this stigma of being an old person's music, and and it's music is music. That stuff's hard, though. In the yeah. way that he plays so aggressively, I mean, you can't help but just appreciate the musicianship that it takes to do that, yeah. you know. And and it's uh, it, he's definitely been a, a, a resurgence, you know, as far yeah. as uh, as far as that that type of music. So. Yeah, it, it, he's doing good stuff. Good stuff. I love man. I, I love his new album too. I've already forgot what it's called. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> but it happens. I, I'm still listening to Home. That's my favorite album yeah. by him. Yeah. But you hear a song like oh, "Away from the Mire" mm-hmm. and just oh, it, it it hits different emotions, different chords mm-hmm. in you. Like, like I love it when a song is so good that you just have to sit and listen to it. Mm-hmm. It, it. It doesn't make you dance. It doesn't make you whatever. You just have to sit there and listen to it and admire it. Like Billy Strings, not only is he an amazing musician, but dude, his songwriting mm-hmm. is so underrated. Mm-hmm. A song like Watch It Watch It Fall, it, that's one of the best songs written within the last decade. Yeah. And the dude, like you said, is so young. Like he, he's just now getting started. Mm-hmm. That he's going to do some amazing things, I think. Right, and and the whole the whole song that you talking about have the song it's just so it's so good it's it's uh, you know and that I think that's something that this area has a unique view on like to write a good a good song you I mean you you, you got to live it you know yeah. like it, it it just it sounds different you sing it different you know uh, so this area has known hardship has known yeah. strife has known addiction has known. You know all all the you know the, the stuff that that he that I mean anybody from this place can really have an understanding and a grasp yeah. of because it's touched everybody. You know I mean it's it's uh it's it's sad you know to to think about but at the same time this is some of the best people in the world right here. Yeah man. Uh, so. it, it it made me fall in love with the music around this area. When, mm-hmm. Whenever I was growing up, I was mostly in like classic rock and classic hip hop. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and then one day I just kind of realized that like hey. I don't know anything about New York City, and mm-hmm. I don't know anything about being a gangster. Right. And then I heard Tyler Childers. Yeah. And I just I, I remember the first time listening to the Purgatory album. I, I just couldn't turn it off. And, and I was listening to a song like Feathered Indians, and I'm like, man, I know what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. Like, like I, I I I just I felt the lyrics. Yeah. And, and it was so cool to have a musician that you could relate to yeah. that like the the words that he were talking about the places he was talking about you're like i know where that is it just man thank god that the music around this area is getting the recognition that it is mm-hmm. it, it i think it's going to help this area a lot especially like just getting the the message out because so many people just look at this area as a wasteland yeah. you know and, and 
every time it's showcased, it's showcased in a bad way, almost. Yeah. I, I know that we go through hard times, but we also have some of the best people and the best music on planet Earth. Mm-hmm. And I think that people like Tyler and Sturgill and Chris and all these other big names are giving it that good light, but also just giving people a, a role model, somebody mm-hmm. to look up to. And that's something that so many people in this area need. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that, that's the truth. And and some of the best music in the world is being made right here. Yeah. I mean, it's – it's and like you said, to, to touch on the how the lyrics, you know, I remember the, thinking the same thing when I was listening to Childers. It's like, I know that phrase he just said. Like, I say that phrase myself. Yeah. You know, that, that, that turn of phrase that, you know, only the hillbillies use. You know, yeah. so it's like he's speaking our language. Yeah, man. And he puts it to music. And it's it's it just it hits you different. Like it it it's you can relate to it, like you say, and it's uh it's just it's I it just makes me so proud to 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 be able to, you know, say that those guys are from here. Yeah. You know, uh, that, that 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 whole crew. And I think that it just like lights a fire under every single entertainer in the southwest Virginia, eastern Kentucky area. Whenever, like, you got that momentum going, like, what's going on right now. Whenever I was listening to uh, Hey Somebody, like, like, I was really into the song. It made me feel good. And mm-hmm. then, like, I started listening to the lyrics. And speaking about well-written songs, man, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a <laughs> I, I'm no Tyler Childers, song. but th- th- thank you. That's, uh, that song, and I think my dad said it best. He said, that song kind of wrote itself. Um it's uh I'm I don't know if, if the camera shows it or not, but I'm 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 forty, so uh I've I did been not know that. Well, say, hey, yeah. So it's, I, it's, I had you fooled. The, the the Viking look, man. That's what it is, yeah, yes, the, yes. Vikings don't yes, age. That's that, that's what it is. Uh but since I have been alive, which is forty years this past June, um Harlan's not seen a whole lot of change. Yeah. Most of it's been, you know, I mean there there's some changes that's happened. And we just recently went wet, you know, in the in, in the city limits. So now you can actually go to a store and buy a pack of beer. Yeah, you can do that. We didn't even get to do that for you know thirty nine of my years, you know. So um, it, it, a lot of times in, in small towns like that, a whole lot of you know uh, politics gets wrapped up in it because you got certain folks or certain families that you know run the whole place. Yeah. So. You know, it's it's uh, this song was kind of a um, kind of a call to arms type of thing, saying, "Look, change is going to come. It's inevitable. You can come with us, or you can't. But it's going to come." Yeah. And it, it, it's and that's the, the the whole hook of the song. And it's, you know, I didn't really want to like call anybody out specifically, like, you know, but it's just kind of a saying anybody that's listening, change is going to happen, and you know, we wanted to be on the forefront of that. Yeah. Uh, so I've got I've gotten a lot of messages saying that this should be like you know, the anthem for Harlan, That's you cool, know, which man. makes me super proud. I mean, I, it's I, I I love that, but uh, but yeah, this song just kind of mm-hmm. uh, it it like like it, it wrote itself. It wrote itself. Yeah, man, you, you can tell when an artist is writing from the heart instead of just trying to make a hit. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's, it's so obvious the both ways, and y'all can tell like you just. You really, especially just all the thought that you put not into just the song, but the music video mm-hmm. as well. I've only, I've only been to Harlan a few times, but like I, I could just tell how much it meant to that town whenever y'all made that music video and the little Beatles thing that y'all did there at the end on yeah. top of the rooftop. Very cool. That, yeah, that, very that cool. I have to give credit credit to do on that. Ty, that was Tyler Smith's idea. Uh, he's a big Beatles guy, and uh, and he came to me one day and he said. You know, he just because Tyler and I work together, we're, yeah. we're, we're both parole officers, and he uh, he popped in my office and he was like, "Hey, let's do a rooftop scene." I'm like, "What are you talking about?" He's like, "For the for the video, we should do something on a rooftop like the Beatles did." And I'm like, "Can can we do that?" And I was like, "Okay, well let's try it. You yeah. know, see what's worked." But it took a lot of a lot of coordinating and stuff like that. But as Harlan does, everybody came together. You know, yeah. um, we knew a guy with a drone. Uh, we did it in July. It was hot. Uh, we had to pack some gear up there. That's what I was going to say. I bet yeah. the drums was exhausted. Well, yeah, we. I told him, I said, guys, keep it to the minimum that that we can get by with this. And it, it's funny even how we got up there because both of the buildings, well, I say both the buildings, but the rooftop we were on, it, it was an old Belks building. There's nothing in it right now. It's getting remodeled and stuff. 
the building that we had to go through on the corner we, is actually going to be a brewery coming to Harlan. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be the Har- nice. Harlan County Brewery, Brewing Company. Um, so we're excited about mm-hmm. that. We had to go through that building, through a hole in the wall, up the scaffolding, and then out onto the other roof on the other side to get all that done. So Jesus. It was. It's. I mean, I'll show you pictures later. But it was. Uh, it was treacherous at some places. But uh, but we got it done, man. And and the the guy um, <laughs> that uh, loaned us the uh, the drone. Um, I mean, it turned out better than than what I thought. I because the guy that we had do the video, Dakota Sailor again. Uh, you know, I kind of said, man, do what you need to do. We're here to help you however we can. And and he pieced all that together and. We, you know, the, the video started off with us at the at the radio station, and I went through town, gathered everybody up like we're going, you know, to this big rooftop to like shout it from the rooftops that hey, you know, change is coming. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, we went to several businesses around there, and it's businesses that have been really good to us. Um, yeah. You know, and and it, we went to some other businesses, and and we told them the the concept of the video. Um, as when I show them the lyrics and stuff, and some of them decline. They said, "You know what? We don't want to get involved," which is fine. That's yeah. fine, you know. But it just kind of goes to show that that's kind of what Harlan deals with. Like you got some people that are afraid to express themselves. They're 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 afraid of of, of criticism and things like that. So yeah. I mean, Kudzu's always been a band that's been at the forefront of what Harlan could possibly do, you know. So yeah. we like to represent Harlan wherever we go. Uh, now we know that movies can be shot in Harlan. There's music videos that can be shot in Harlan. There's bands that can be successful out of Harlan. It it can all be done, and we're from the sticks, man. Yeah. You know, so it's 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 a nice feather we like to put in our cap. Man, I love living in a small town. Yeah. Like I have friends that, of course, went out to Lexington and Georgetown and stuff like that, and I'll go visit them. But just hanging out in, in a place like that, it makes me appreciate where we live so much more. Mm-hmm. Like you were saying, people come together. Mm-hmm. Like, like uh, I, I'm from a little community in Phelps. We've lost quite a few people over there the last few weeks. And uh, last night they held a candlelight vigil for the community, and everybody came out. And I was just thinking to myself, you couldn't do that in a place like Chicago right. or New York City right. or Los Angeles. You might get some people coming out, but you wouldn't get the whole town. Mm-hmm. Like basically, the whole town was out there that night. Somebody passes away, everybody's bringing food over to the house, you know, stuff like that. If you break down the side of the road, you'll have fifty people stop and say, "Need help, bub?" Yeah, yeah. And, and, and yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll help you. I mean, people that it's... will literally give the shirt off of their back for you. And oh, you just you don't get that everywhere, mm-hmm. and it makes me appreciate a small town life so much more. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's true. And like I said, we we love where we're from. We consider ourselves representatives wherever we go play, and we played. You know, we played regionally. Now it used to just be kind of a local thing, but we played. I mean, we've played in uh, down of course down in Tennessee, over in Virginia. We've gone to Mississippi. We've gone up to Ohio. We've gone. We haven't made nice. it to West Virginia yet. That's I don't know why that is, but we just you have went, like literally everywhere around it. Yeah, yeah, it, everywhere. So anybody in Virginia, West Virginia listening, Cubs or Killers, we love to come play. So holler at us. We we like to check that state out off, off our list. Yeah, par- maybe hit up Parkersburg. I love that little town up there. Okay, I, I do a lot of stand up comedy stuff up there. I'm not sure how the music scene is. Yeah, but Parkersburg, West Virginia, is such an underrated place. I see. I, I haven't even heard of it. So yeah. Not I'll, a lot of people have, man. I'll go check it out. I, I, I ride bikes all the time. So I, I made to take that trip up this way and just, you know, head up that way and see, see what I can see. What I can see. How you were saying that y'all uh, just became a wet county yeah. just, just a little bit ago. Did you have a lot of bootlegging and stuff going oh, yes. on before? Because oh, yeah. like, dude, yeah, over, yeah. over there in Phelps, it mm-hmm. was the same mm-hmm. exact thing. Like it, it was just dry. You had to drive 45 minutes or an hour in any direction yeah. if you wanted any type of beer. Or yeah. anything. Well, we, I mean, to, to to clarify, it was for like the Harlan City part. Now, we we the county uh, towards Cumberland, they had you know they they were wet, but they were in a different part. So yeah, uh, that's where everybody from Harlan, the city part, would drive to get their alcohol, or they would go to Virginia. But yeah. the first place in Virginia didn't have a liquor license, so you couldn't get any bourbon or anything like that. You'd have just yeah. it's just beer or wine. Uh, Cumberland was the way, and that's from from my house to Cumberland mm-hmm. to the first. Alcohol store you could go to, it was right around twenty eight miles, I'd say. Yeah. You know, so uh but yeah, it's it's just it, it took several rounds of voting to get that to pass. Um but it, it finally did and now we have two liquor stores in Harlan. 
Of no, course, per, per capita, you can only have, you know, a certain amount. You can only have so many stores depending on the population where you yeah. are. So uh, we we have two, and they're they're doing great right now. So, so many people look at a show, though, like Moonshiners or something like that, mm-hmm. and just say, like, oh, that's just a TV thing. Yeah. Or, oh, that was 50, 100 years ago. That don't happen anymore. Right. No. It still happens. I, 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 I know a few. I'm not going to say anything. But, I mean, like... Cops will go and buy off of them because they don't want to drive 45 minutes to the nearest place or something like that. It, it's such a and, – and everybody knows the people that are. Yeah. You know, they just don't say anything because they're buying off of them too. Right. It's I've always enjoyed the whole art of moonshining, yeah. I guess. And, yeah. and and most of the time there's some of the nicest people on earth. Oh, yeah. They're just trying to make a buck. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's it, I mean, I, I know right off the top of my head there's five people that I know I could go get a – Get a court from, you know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, Whew, that it's, white lightning, buddy. Yeah, man. Woo-hoo-hoo. I like mine charred though. If I had to pick between the two, I'll take mine a little bit aged in an in a oak barrel. I I, I've always liked apple pie. When, when, oh when, yeah, dude, yeah. that is my go-to. Oh. And, and, and whenever they have the fruit in there, yeah, woo. yeah. You, you ever been brave enough to actually eat the fruit that comes out of there? Yeah. Not a good that, idea. That's, that's no, that, not, not not a good idea at all. <laughs> nope, you, nope. You're better off just drinking the whole quart. Yeah. That buddy, that fruit at the bottom will do you in more than any right. of that liquid will. Yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah, and people don't realize that. And man, whenever I see like stuff like the what, what's that one moonshine that they'll sell in like Walmart? Uh, they have a distillery there in Tennessee. Uh, that, that that the store bought moonshine basically. Old, old Smoky or is that what it is? Something so, like that. I can't that. remember what it was. Yeah, I, I've had that, and yeah. I'm like, it's all right. It's not the same. But dude, once you've had the real thing, mm. no, it, it's not anywhere close. No, it's not. It's not. So it's uh, yeah. I, I want it in, a, in an unmarked jar. You know, I'll yeah. give it my own test. I'll spin it in the light, and make sure the bubbles, you know, are there suspended. Because that yeah. means it's, it's good stuff. And. uh that's that. That's the way that I that, that I like my stuff. Now, now, don't be wrong. I I enjoy a good cup of bourbon every now and then, but uh, you know, I I I, I enjoy I enjoy my whiskey. Yeah, yeah, I man. I, I'm I'm the same way, dude. And, and thank God for those people out there that are still pushing. And, and like you said, they're just trying to make a buck. That's one thing that so many people don't realize yeah. is you know, like in in some towns. That's what you got. You know, there, mm-hmm. there's not many options. Some of the people that I know that do moonshine, they had to drop out of school in the eighth grade to be able to work on the family farm mm-hmm. or whatever. They don't yeah. have an education. They're, right. they're, they're knowing what they know how to do, and they do it well, yes. my friend. Yes. I, I, I think that you know, it, it's a beautiful thing. I think that our area is being noticed for, like you were saying, like the distilleries and stuff mm-hmm. like that because, I mean, we do it good. We, we we make some exactly. dang good whiskey exactly. here in the in, in bourbon in this state. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh it's I'm I'm uh I'm loving what this state's doing. On on all levels. You know, I, I love I love Kentucky. I mean it's uh it's it, it's always gonna be home for me. Yeah, it, it's it, it's a beautiful place. And also it's being noticed now for more than just country music i'm not a huge like modern rap fan but like the jack harlow dude uh, i don't even know who you're talking about man yeah he, <laughs> I, to, to, to be honest i i can only name like one or two songs but he's like this like rapper kid right. that is, he's blowing up pretty good bit i think he's from louisville or yeah. something alex help me out with that I, but yeah <laughs> he, he, he messages me during the show whenever i'm talking out of my butt like i am mm-hmm. right now but you know it's I, I love that we're known for good whiskey and good country music, but I, I can also understand some of the stereotypes that come with that. Oh, but yeah. man, like Kentucky is just—it's—it's it's so much more yeah. than just those two things. One of the most beautiful places on planet Earth. Like whenever I, I have a lot of family in Georgia, and I do this little thing on TikTok called Appalachian Adventures, where I just go places and film a little bit and i try to put local music behind the videos and whenever i'm like showing them a place like the breaks their mouth drops because they've they've never seen anything like that the the people in this area that are from here that were born here i think sometimes take for granted just how beautiful a place this is i agree i agree 100 yeah uh you know even in in my youth you know um i i was like you know i can't wait to you know get out of town you know 
all that stuff. Yeah. And and then I got out of town, went to college at AKU for 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 a couple of years, and then uh, it was it was a little bit torturous because I was in uh, in Keene Hall, and uh, I was facing um, back towards um, the east, and I my room was in the top floor, and at my window I could see. The Appalachian Mountains from from where I was, you know, and I yeah. I didn't realize how much that I'd miss those, yeah. While I was up there, and then I I graduated, uh, Eternal Colonel baby, uh, and uh, went straight back home. Never 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 planned to leave. Yeah, man, it, it's it, it's heartbreaking for the people that have to, and whenever they come back, I totally get it. Yeah, like, like I fully understand, and and I do think that this area is is growing in ways too. Like you were saying, places like Harlan mm-hmm. and other like Pikeville has got some distilleries, has stuff like that promoting tourism and bringing people in like that. And there's a lot of you know economic development going on around the area. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you said, it's a slow process, but a change is going to happen. Yeah, yeah, it's it's change is good. I mean, it, it's it's. You know, it's the way it needs to be. You know, if you're stagnant for so long, and that's that's kind of something I tell about Harlan too. Like if I, if it, I always tell people that things are easier to watch when they're not moving. So mm. if things, you know, are changing, it makes other things have to have to work and stuff. And so the people that are in charge of those things sometimes, yeah. it's easier to say, you know what, if we just keep it the way it is. We know how it works. It's not going to go anywhere. It's easy yeah. to watch. Now, if you put things in motion, things bouncing around, activities happening, things like that, you add new variables to the equation, you know, it gets yeah. things moving. It changes things, you know. Even just having conversations, you know, it it, 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 it changes things. So, uh, again, that's kind of how the song kind of wrote itself. You know, I'd, I'd been sitting there for, you know, 40 years, and there had been some changes. Like I said, I'm not yeah. – I never would never ever knock my hometown, but um, – you know, it just, I got tired of just everybody just talking about it and nothing yeah. ever being done. There's you know? a lot of that. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, buddy, we'll, and they give you a, it, give you a handshake in the word and then nothing happens. That's part of the song, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, they tell you one thing and then they go do what they want to do. Yeah. Because. And, and good for y'all for calling out that too, man. That, that, that needs to be called right. out. Right. And that's, that's just the, the, the frustration that, that I, that I, that I'd felt. And I think, you know, I'm not gonna say it's a, a the best song ever, but I mean, I think a lot of people, especially my age, felt that way. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's just been the same for so long. Um, and I'm not saying this song's gonna change anything. I just, I just, I got tired of just standing by. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, I'm not mm-hmm. the youngest guy anymore. You know, what's gonna keep it from being the same way 20 years from 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 now? Yeah. You know, so I'm hoping it that this kind of spearheaded some type of uh it, it gets the ball rolling i hope I, I hope yeah. i mean it, it, if not then I, I i gave it my best and you know but uh that's that's all i can do is just you know do what you do and hope you mattered at some point in life you know yeah. so wasn't that show uh do you remember justified yeah. on fx wasn't yeah. that did it ha- have something to do with harlan yeah the, the guy Raylan gibbons was supposed to be from harlan Okay, uh, yeah, I thought I remember that. Zero of it was shot in Harlan. <laughs> I think it was like, you know, the hills were like the Hollywood Hills, you know, uh, and it made it to where Harlan was like 20 minutes away from Lexington. I'll, yeah. I'll be honest with you, I didn't. I watched one episode and I was like, I can't do this. Yeah. It's too inconsistent, uh, yeah. you know. So, I, I mean, that was um, – um, it was it was cool. I, about everywhere that we go, hey, you know, that show justified, you know, <laughs> where's Raylan? So – uh, I'll, yeah. think, I'll think Timothy Oliphant lives. Yeah, in Harlan, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it, but it was uh, it, it, it was cool that that they you know used Harlan as as a base for that. Um, yeah. I mean, there, there's I guess that I'm, if I'm being honest, there was a couple of of you know set scenes that may have been in Harlan here and there, uh-huh. you know, buildings and things like that, drive-throughs and things like that. But yeah, it, it's I, I just couldn't bring myself to watch it because it was just it was. I couldn't wrap my head around Lexington being 20 minutes away from Harlan. Yeah, that, that show almost made me scared to go to Harlan. Yeah. I, I was like, I, I don't know if I well. want to go there, man. <laughs> it, it didn't exactly paint it in the best picture, but it, it was a pretty good show. I only watched like the first few seasons, and then yeah. I just kind of fell out of television there. Uh, so, yeah, it, I, 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 I love that show, man. Me and my cousin, Neil, we, uh, we watch that show all the time. So. That's cool that that. Uh, so is it a movie about the whole FBI and a woman 
case being shot? Is it a movie or like a TV show? It, it's a movie. I, and for the life of me, I cannot think of the name of the movie. I know there was a movie there called Above Suspicion. That may be what it was, uh, but I, I can't remember a hundred percent what what movie it was. But yeah, that that was uh, uh, a lot of it was uh, was was shot in Harlan. Um, the uh, cool cool little side note: my brother was actually sat. Uh, site coordinator on that, like he would go out and find these locations, or I guess locations manager, I think is what it was. But yeah. he would go out and uh, find locations. I say, okay, the director would be like, this is what I want. I want a waterfall. I want you know a pool of water, or I want you know a, a high wall, or I want a mouth of a coal mine, or whatever yeah. you know. And he'd like, okay, got you. Give me a day. And he'd go out and he'd find these places, take pictures, bring them back to the director, and he'd be like, that's it. So that, that 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 was a cool a cool a cool thing. Shout out to to Jesse Brock on that one. That's cool, man. Yeah. And, and I think that that uh, is true. The uh, above suspicion thing. Is that it? Okay. Yeah. But I guess right. Based okay. on the real life nineteen eighty nine murder of Suzanne Smith. That's that's yeah. That's it then. Pretty sure that's it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's uh, I don't think it hit like theaters. I think it's on like went to DVD. Uh, I know not too long ago they had the the screening for it. Mm-hmm. Um. In in Harlan, so uh, yeah, it was it it it, it was cool, man. I, I I watched it and and I was uh, seeing people that that I knew that made little cameos in there and parts of Harlan that I saw and recognized. So it's it's yeah. it's, it's cool, man. It, it makes you feel good that you see you know a part of your hometown on a, on the big screen. It's, yeah. it's cool, man. Yeah, man. I I think that you know Kentucky is on the up and up. Mm-hmm. It, it was always just the stereotypical thing that West Virginia still has going on. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think that I think that we've kind of uh, out societized whatever West Virginia. They're 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 still having a hard time up there. <laughs> Sorry to everybody in West Virginia. You still got them stereotypes. <laughs> but 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 we do too to an extent. But I guess like Lexington and Louisville and that Jack Harlow guy, like uh, the guy I was talking about earlier. Yeah. He's from Louisville. Mm-hmm. So so you got those you you got that momentum going in the bluegrass state. Yeah. And kind of just showing everybody what we're capable of. You know, yeah. it, it ain't just about basketball and bourbon and bluegrass. Right. We got so much more to offer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it, like where I'm from, like everybody you see from Harlan, oh, first thing to think of, coal mines, Oxycontins. First thing to think of. Yeah. Everybody. You know, bloody Harlan, people killing each other. It's just, you know, that's that's the first thought that everybody has about it. And, and Harlan is just so beautiful, man. It's just. I, I've heard that, though, the bloody Harlan thing. Yeah. What, what's, what's with that? That was the mine strikes. Uh, okay. Yeah, it, it has happened twice, uh, twice in Harlan. It was just, uh, you know, um, it was just a rough time to be uh, Harlan County, USA. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen that movie or not. Mm-hmm. If you haven't, I would highly recommend you watch that. I don't know what streaming platform it's on, but it was based on Brookside Mines in in, in Harlan. It's a little community called uh, Brookside up towards Everts. Yeah, um, and it was just a bunch of mine strikes, man, and it got violent. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, uh, I mean, state police had to come in and and it, it, it didn't last, you know, a couple of days. It lasted a long, long time. People were killed, you know, uh, for, for, for that, just just because of the, the mine strikes, because that was the only thing that was there that was making any money. Yeah. So, I mean, people fought for it, you know. Um, and, 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 you you know, in a way, you can't blame them, too. Like, like I watched a little documentary about a. Uh, what is it? Was it Blair Mountain? It's early, and I haven't had enough yeah, coffee. Yeah. I, I, th- I think I know. <laughs> yeah, coffee. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, but, I, I think I know what you're talking about, though. But, yeah, but but I watched that little documentary about the the uh, mine strike up there, and you know you have to like you can see both sides. I know the cops are just doing their jobs, but the coal miners at the time were also just trying to keep their jobs. Yeah. That's all that was going on. Yeah. And it's just one of them stories where it, it's a double-edged sword and you can see both sides. Yeah. So it, it's terrible that stuff like that happened, but at the same time, you can fully understand. Yeah. I mean, it, it was it, it was a rough time, it, it, r- rough time in Harlan to be, to be around at that time. And it's not been that long ago, you know, so um, – but yeah, I mean Harlan still has that uh, has a little bit of the the bloody Harlan reputation, you know. If you don't have a gun at the border, they'll give you one, you know. <laughs> so it's uh, it's 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 an, it's an old joke, but um, but yeah, it, I mean Harlan's it's just, it's it's beautiful, man. I, I love the people there. Uh, I I never want to leave. You got some people that just can't wait to get out of there, and yeah. and that's that's on them, you know. I understand people got different, you know goals in life and things and sometimes you can't achieve that where we're from you just don't have the resources yeah um but but for me and mine harlan's home you yeah. know it, it, it'll, it'll always be home for me 
Well, well, watching a video like y'all's, I, I mean, it makes you want to visit, you know. And I think that that's a, a cool thing that many local bands are doing is kind of giving spotlight to their hometown. It used to be like people would go to Nashville mm -hmm. or Lexington or a place like that to shoot a music video. Yeah. And I, I don't know exactly what created this, but all of a sudden people have got prideful about where they're from. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and it, it's it's such a beautiful thing because the entertainers, I mean, those are the ones that are going to give it the spotlight. Yeah. All these politicians, like you say in the song, you know, a handshake and then you never see their face again. Yeah. That's about all the help that we've had around here. It's cool that entertainers are the ones stepping up like, hey, we live in a great place and y'all yeah. need to recognize it. Like if, if I listen to bands, you know, like I want to know where they're from. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to know where the – the label wants us to think they're from, you know, not all bands are from Nashville. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, uh, I, I want people to know where we're from, what we're dealt with, what we're looking at, you know, and uh, I think making the music video in Harlan with Harlan people, by Harlan people, is uh, one of the best ways that you can actually display it because I, I don't know how many views the video's got now, but, I mean, I think it's probably up around 8,000 now, I think, or something nice, like that, and that's 8,000 people that may have not seen where I'm from or yeah. never seen in Harlan, you know, and they want to see Harlan in a different light besides the stereotypical thoughts that a lot of people yeah. have. Um, so there's, there's businesses there, you know, there's, there's wonderful people there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we wanted to show that because we're just so proud of where we're from. Yeah. I heard of a lot of people like last year during the pandemic, I heard a lot of people that were moving to this area yeah. that were living in places like Richmond mm -hmm. and Louisville and Lexington because they realized, and that's another thing that I appreciate about a small town and where we live, is that when stuff hits the fan, this is the type of place that you want to be at. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, so many people around here, you know, like I, I know it's hard times that brought that brought up these skills that people have, like living off the land or knowing how to work a farm or canning or whatever. Like it used to be that was just what you had to do to survive. But nowadays, there were some very good skills to have. Oh, yeah. And also it's like, I mean, the, the mountains, you can feel like you're boxed in, but you can also feel safe. Mm -hmm. It's just about however you want to look at it. Like I, I live up a holler. And I'm so thankful for that. I was thinking about yeah. that the other day. I'm like, man, I live away from everything. Yeah. I live away from society. I can just go home and forget that the outside world exists, and all I have to worry about is Ratliff Creek. Right. And and it's 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 a very beautiful thing. And but whenever I was younger, I didn't think that way. I didn't mm -hmm. think that way at all. I was one of those people that just could not wait to get out. And I think that a lot of people that think that way, you're gonna see a majority of them move back within mm -hmm. the in the next few years because yeah. then they realize how good they had it. Yeah, I, I, a lot of times mountains will call you back. Like I, oh, yeah. I get kind of, I don't want to say uncomfortable, but I'm like, I'll go up. It's where the mountains start shrinking, you know, yeah. like north of Lexington, you know, something like that. And I look around, I'm like, man, I feel awful exposed up here. Yeah. <laughs> so I, 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 I like the feeling, you know, I guess, at home in, in, in the mountains, up hollers on top of mountains, you know, yeah. it's just, uh, it, it, it just makes me feel so, so good. I just, I'm, I'm an old country boy and, and, uh, it's, it, I just, I, I couldn't, I don't think I'd ever could adapt to living life so fast Yeah. in, you know, cities and stuff. Uh, I just, I've been to New York one time. I was there for about two hours and I was like, I'm ready to go home. Dude, I, I was the same way. So. I, I was like, I was 15 years old whenever I went to yeah. uh, New York. And I was young and dumb. I had 150 bucks. I saved up for a little while. And I'm like, man, I got $150. Yeah. I can buy everything. <laughs> Dude, I bought a piece of pizza, a can of Coke, and I think like a jacket. And yeah. I had to borrow some money off my dad for yeah. the jacket because the pizza and the pop was like 12 bucks or something yeah. like that. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And, and after that, I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. I, I didn't even see the Statue of Liberty while I'm there. I'll look at pictures. I, yeah. I'm good. I, I'm right. Driving through Coal Run, the traffic pisses me off. <laughs> I mean, like, We just came through it a second ago. <laughs> I, I, I can't stand it. Red light after red light. You stop, go, stop, go. I I got bad road rage too. Maybe, maybe that's one of the mm. that's one of the things. What are you but, driving? I got to watch out for it when I leave. <laughs> you do trust me. <laughs> you do. But like driving in a place like Lexington or Georgetown, like you said, that fast paced lifestyle. If you love it, good for you. Yeah, great. But but it is 
definitely not for me. And I'm so thankful that like I was able to experience some of the world and mm-hmm. and hit the road. And, and I think that doing all of that really made me appreciate the life that we live around here. Yeah, because so many people that want to live leave the mountains rather you know they haven't been out of them maybe yeah yeah and you don't you just don't realize what you got until it's gone oh ex- exactly and that's that's what i realized in, in college too like i i mean i missed it you know yeah. i mean i i i don't ever want to you know n- uh, call another place home so yeah. uh but yeah I, I i i love where i'm from you know and i know the guys that i'm in the band with you know, are, are super proud of where they're all from too so yeah it's it's I, it's makes me so you know feel good about you know we did this as you know just a, a the whole band's from harlan there's nobody that's been transplanted and we're all from from right there so it's a good thing, uh, right? yeah and uh we actually did another video w- with another song it's uh it's called i won't drown Love that, uh, dude. yeah it's it's uh, that one you can tell we don't know what we're doing <laughs> so well, it, 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 it felt like a good time man and that's that's what i really dig about the song like I don't know. Like I said, just makes you. It's it's one of them feel good. I don't know. I got a, yeah. I got a good vibe off the video. Yeah, it was well. It, it, again, shout out to Dakota Sailor for that. Um, and Dakota is one of the smartest guys out, out there. He he went to school for this stuff. You know, what, what's the name of his company again? The, Lunchbox uh, Lunch Break Productions. They're on Facebook. Uh, so up, yeah, if you want music videos or any type of commercial shot, any videography, anything like that, give him a holler. Uh, but he. Um, he shot that video, and we shot that with. Uh, I had a, a, a Nikon thirty five hundred D. I think we shot the whole thing with that, and it turned out, you know, great. And yeah. it took him a long time because you know it takes a while to process all, all that stuff. And uh, you know, we shared the video uh, on Facebook again, not knowing what we're doing, and it just caught fire, man. Um, and it's it's uh, we put it on YouTube and and. Uh, you know, it, it. I was just so proud that that was done, just out of nothing. You know, yeah. it, it just it just happened. And we didn't. I mean, we just got the idea one day. It's like, hey, let's just do a music video because nobody else has done one here. Let's just do it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's taking an initiative like that that I think is going to you know help bring the change. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and it is so cool that y'all are keeping it local too because like we were talking about earlier. You know, like we got great musicians. Don't get me wrong. But we also have amazing producers yeah. and um, amazing videographers mm-hmm. and audio technicians. Yeah. So, some of the best on planet Earth. What do y'all have? Uh, what are y'all working on right now? Well, we we've recorded several songs and we're releasing them kind of one at a time. The first one we released is uh, "I Won't Drown." That's out right now. You can get it on all the the platforms that you can listen to music on. It's on everything. Uh, so that's a music video out for that, and the songs out. The one we just did was "Hey Somebody." Also, a music video with that on all the platforms as well, uh, and both are, I guess you would call them in the vein of like southern rock with a, maybe a flair of ACDC in there, I guess, uh, yeah. which I, I love both of those. Uh, but this next one we got that's coming out, uh, it's uh, it's far removed from either one of those. It's more of a slow, slow song, uh, okay. something that Kudzu's really not that known for. Uh, so it's. Uh, that's probably going to come out. Um, I'm going to try to make it to where it comes out this winter, um, and that'll hold us over until next next uh, next spring when we're going to start start some new things going on then. But we got nice, uh, um, that. Just stay tuned for that one if, if you're on Facebook or any of that stuff. Instagram, Kudzu Killers, uh, we're we're on that. Just uh, watch that stuff for announcements and everything because uh, we'll, uh, we'll that 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 one will be coming out soon. It's good, man. And, and like I said, congratulations on all the success as the band, too. I, Thank you. I, I've, I've heard y'all around so much mm-hmm. for the past few years. And now to see y'all getting the momentum that you have right now, yeah. like, like I said earlier, I like it when good things happen to good people. So congratulations on everything. Thank you. It's right. a lot of hard work, man. Like anybody that's wanting to start a band, like get ready because, you know, you, you're going to meet adversity. You're going to. You know, yeah, what we were talking about before we hopped on air, it's a job. Yeah. Like, like, like it ain't, it, it, it's a hobby if you want it to be, but mm-hmm. it's also a job if you work hard enough. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it, you know, we've been lucky enough to, to where we're at the point now where that we're actually making a little bit of money with this, you know, not, we're not breaking the bank by any means, but, uh, it was, uh, it, it's, it's good to, to, to know that it started from nothing 
around campfires, you know, to now we're going to get to open for Diamond Rio on October the 8th in Barville on a big, huge stage, yeah. you know. And then there's people that run our sound for us, you know, and it's yeah. like I'd still get humbled by that because when we play places where I got to run sound, I'm, I'm nervous, I'm stressed out and stuff, you know. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's just it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. Well, man, thank you for your time today, dude. Yeah. This was a lot of fun, man. I really it enjoyed this. It was. Thank you for having us. Or me, I guess. You know, hello to the rest of the guys that couldn't make it out here today. They all gotta they all gotta work. But uh Yeah, I understand yeah. that. And, and yeah, big shout to the guys. Anytime that y'all want to come back on and bring the rest of the dudes, we'll yeah. make it happen, man. We'll do it, man. But thanks again, dude. All right. Thank you. See you next week, folks. Boom. All right, man. There we go.